Hi beautiful souls, it's Tan here again today with another video on this astrology channel for you. And today we're going to be talking about composite chart green flags. So I previously made a video on composite chart red flags and there's been questions about how about green flags and composite charts. So if you haven't seen that video, I also highly recommend that you check it out and you can come back and watch this video. And if you've been keeping up with the channel and you like the content that I've been putting out, you can support me on a platform called coffee.com by buying me a coffee. The support that you provide me with will go into purchasing tools and equipment that I have to use to make these YouTube videos for you guys, as well as putting out birth chart readings. So yes, composite chart green flags. So there's really no aspects or placements in a co relationship composite chart that is like an indicator of yes, you should go for this relationship or this relationship is going to be wonderful. This relationship is showing that you are compatible and it should be a long term. There isn't one particular thing. There can be a pattern of really nice aspects and placements that can overall make a really beautiful relationship smoothie, a delicious smoothie. But of course, that smoothie, you know, may have one, let's say, strawberry that was not so fresh. So even though, you know, you watch this video and you find that you and your partner and your composite have these particular indicators, this does not negate the effect of other hard composite chart aspects and placements, specifically the ones that I talked about in my composite chart red flag videos. So if you have something in this video and you have something in the composite from that red flag video, it's going to give two um, aspects to a relationship. The aspects in this video do not negate, do not take away the effect of anything that is more problematic, but it can give an, a different an outlet for particular energies in your relationship to go towards so that the relationship doesn't have to cause those uh, more intense or extreme placements to be happening all the time. So yes, when we are talking about green flags or in this video, I would consider them to be like really positive composite chart aspects. We're talking about things that make a relationship feel complete and whole and that it's got all the ingredients in that relationship smoothie that is required, right? It's got the fruits, it's got a little bit of like milk or yogurt, and it's got something to give it taste like that. So there are three main um, components of a relationship that I feel really completes it. And the first one is a relationship that offers a feeling of balance between masculine and feminine energy. This does not mean male or female. This means that there is a, an equal balance of assertiveness and passiveness, yin and yang, in a relationship. The second factor is going to be depth, it's intimacy, right? We all need that. Feeling like a particular person, you know, can really bond with us at a very deep, deep level. And the third one is going to be growth, a relationship that is stagnant and the two people, um, they're not learning anything about life or from each other. That can be a relationship that like be one of those factors that causes people to look outside of the relationship for something else that can allow them to grow. So we need these three in a really nice juicy balance in relationships. The first factor when it comes to a balance, yin and yang energy, in a composite chart, I would look for the sun and the moon making really nice aspects. So this can mean that the sun and the moon in the composite, what I really like is the trine, sun and moon trine, sun and moon sextile, and sun and moon quintile or biquintile in the composite chart because that is showing that the two of you come together and there is something complementary about the male and female energy that you bring into the relationship. No, the, um, let's say that there's a, a partner who is, has more 
assertive masculine qualities and another partner has more feminine um, passive qualities but that person also has some more aggressive masculine qualities and the masculine person also has a more passive feminine but somehow it just blends together to offer balance something new that balances each other out it can make things like when you're at home versus when you're going out and being outgoing together feel good it can make things like um, the person who is caretaking versus the person who is protective balancing each other out so that's really important to give this wholeness in relationships the conjunction between the sun and the moon and the opposition between the sun and the moon is going to depend on whether the natal chart holders like this type of an energy or not because the conjunction can be too familiar that you may feel like it's not giving you something new in the relationship the opposition can bring too much polarizing and extremes of your individual characters to come out that may uh, be a little bit challenging over time but again it depends on if the two people will like this type of energy or not the square between the sun and the moon and the in conjunction between the sun and the moon over time the square is attractive at first but both of them over time with the square feels draining and exhausting and the in conjunction can feel this is one of those that can feel like there's something missing in this relationship we have a lot of time apart and another thing about feeling like complete and whole that I kind of want to touch on is a positive Saturn so when you see that like Saturn is making a like trine or sextile a quintile or biquintile and even for some people the opposition between Saturn and the moon or Saturn and Venus but you know easy at Saturn with Venus and the moon um, shows that there is a certain amount of stability there's some consistency something that you can expect out of this relationship it's not totally like a wild card where it's so wild that you can't make a relationship out of it at all it's a relationship it's a relationship where there's still elements of the traditional or the societal demands of a relationship and therefore it's easy for you and your partner to at least for this particular aspect of your relationship you can have other wild things you can have Uranus and Jupiter doing other wild things but at least for this part of the relationship um, you get to just like rest <laughs> you get to just like have the material things the lifestyle factors are compatible the lifestyle is at least easy and so you don't have to kind of like worry about the money too much or worry about like where are you going to live or worry too much about like am I going to have enough resources to follow my dreams if I'm with this person or am I going to have to use all my resources on this person there's none of that with good positive Saturn so that's going to be the first indicator the second indicator and this one is going to be about intimacy depth of understanding that I like to see in a composite chart is positive Venus Pluto contacts like a Venus trine Pluto, Venus sextile Pluto, Venus conjunct Pluto is also really great, and the Venus quintile or the biquintile from Venus and Pluto. These are all showing that there's a depth of feeling between the two of you, and the relationship has a level of intimacy that other people outside of the relationship your relationship may not understand they may not get it it's between the two of you it's something that you share um, the trine and sex style happens quite naturally and it, it has this feeling of like you know like we are legendary together that's what it tends to feel like like there's something there's something classic like a classic um, way of being and bonding that type of a feeling legendary that's the best word I can think of right now the the conjunction is very intense and felt very much strongly than the others there's so much common ground when it comes to like um, the things that you want to do to show each other how much your souls merge but of course 
and the, the quintile, the biquintile, adds an element of fun to the way that the intimacy happens in a relationship. You guys get creative together. There's laughter and there's joy in the intimacy process. All of these aspects, however, can bring jealousy and possessiveness because it is Venus Pluto. It doesn't matter what the aspect is, but it's easier to work with because the trust can be very strong between the two of you or it can be very weak. If the trust is very strong, these are wonderful aspects to have. The last factor when it comes to growth in a relationship that I really like to see, that element of having growth, is when there's positive Jupiter and Uranus in a composite chart. So there's so many things that Uranus and Jupiter can do and I'll try to list them out for you here. So with Jupiter, if I see that Jupiter is making a, a conjunction, a conjunction, um, a trine, a sextile, a quintile or a biquintile to the sun or to the moon. Yes, these ones, not the square and not the opposition between Jupiter and sun and moon. This is showing that there is a, an element of friendliness, friendly relating. And of course, friendship is a very important part of relationships because um, friendships can last for a really long time and there's no pettiness when it comes to Jupiter. But there's also um, a, a good will, wishing the best for the other person, encouraging the other person, encouraging each other and giving each other support when needed without being petty and small. So that's Jupiter with sun and moon. Jupiter with um, specifically, specifically Jupiter conjunct the moon. I really like Jupiter conjunct the moon. It's just, it's showing emotional prosperity and abundance. So that's a really, actually really good one. Jupiter and Uranus um, in any aspect to Mercury, except in conjunction on semi-sextile. So Jupiter and Uranus conjunct opposite, square, trine, sextile, quintile, biquintile to Mercury is beautiful because there's an element of challenging each other, bringing something new into the way that you both used to think and see about the world, it's expanding each other's thinking, mind, expanding each other's consciousness. So that is something that a lot of people actually may actually be looking for in a relationship. Uranus with the sun and the moon. Uranus, not really conjunct because Uranus conjunctions can cause too much tolerance, too much allowing. So I'm going to go with Uranus. I'm going to go with Uranus trine, sextile, quintile, biquintile, the sun and the moon. Excellent, because when it comes to your individuality and your emotions and how you feel in this relationship, it is going to feel like you can be as crazy and eccentric and as weird as you want and all your quirks and all your weirdness and um, your weird ideas and your weird ideals and your weird careers, your weird career path, you know, all of that. Just make it so that you can be yourself in a relationship and you can grow if you need to. Even though you may, you know, do different things or grow apart from time to time, you always come back together because you know that there's no other place in the world where you can be yourself as much as you can with this particular person. So I really like those aspects. And the last thing I want to touch on, which I think is a helpful factor um, in relationships, is when you have a lot of planets or even just the sun or the moon in the composite 11th house. I love this. I love, 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 love the composite 11th house because it's, it's that place where if you want to have a long-term relationship, the 11th house is showing that there's tolerance between you guys in a relationship. So when things kind of like it gets tough in life, you know, when things are kind of like, I got to work over time this week and next week, and I got to take care of my sick dog, and um, my brothers are having a lot of troubles. You know, the other person just kind of feels like, yeah, I get you, I understand you, I'm here for you. Um, we don't have to do anything romantic or 
yeah, we don't have to do anything romantic for the next two or three weeks. That's, that's fine. I get you. I'm like a friend to you. That is why the 11th house is so important in relationships. And if you can have it, it is a blessing. If you can have the sun or the moon there in the 11th or like many planets there, it is such a blessing for an ease in long-term relationships. Um, and if you have it coupled with some of the other things I talked about in this video, that's really great. If you have it with some of the other things like and I talked about in the red flag videos, the 11th house planets can help out, but it's not going to negate, like I said previously. So yes, guys, that's going to be my take on composite chart green flags, which is really, really positive composite chart aspects. If there's anything else that you feel um, I didn't cover in this video, you can just leave them in the comments and I can kind of let you know what I think about that. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you haven't. If you already subscribed, thank you very much for coming along. I do birth chart reading, synastry and relationship readings. All the information is on my website. You can check that out. And yes, I'll see you very soon, beautiful souls. Bye.